You know, we have covered many genres of influencers here on this channel, from like gamers to makeup artists to commentary channels, but one genre we've never covered is the poetry community. Now, if you're a frequent watcher of the Marky channel, you would already be aware that I am, quite frankly, a master of words. Streisand is in full effect. Streisand. I have no idea what that means. So with me being a master of words, you can already tell that this piece of drama is going to be right up my alley. So today we are talking about a TikToker called Eliza Grace. It's a TikToker with 635,000 followers, clearly a big account. And as we can tell by the bio, it says that they are a poetry author, which is very debatable. We will get into that. They post daily. This is your safe space, apparently. And they like link their Instagram. And then they also have a link tree, which I can imagine probably goes to their Amazon account. Now we'll explain that in just a second. But if we just go down their account right now, as you can see, they quite literally just post poetry for the most part, and it gets a crazy amount of views. I mean, this last one has got 1.4 million views. I mean, let's have a read. You call me pretty, but you look at other women, and I wonder why I'm not pretty enough to keep your eyes on just me. So the majority of these poems are very, like, relatable content, as you can see, and in the comment section, we have a lot of, like, teenagers or, like, young adults who are commenting, basically saying, like, oh, this is really relatable and whatnot. This is how I'm feeling right now, which seems great, right? Because it seems like a woman has took her passion in life, which is poetry. She's managed to promote it on a TikTok, which will get her a bit of money, but then she's also able to sell books on Amazon for like, like, I don't know, what is it, £10 a piece or something? We'll get into that. But when you actually dive a bit deeper into it, it turns out these poems aren't even hers. Which you can't tell at first glance, right? Because, I mean, it literally has a name at the top. And if we go to her Amazon account, here are her books. She has poetry books for like a tenner a piece on average, right? Where she's got her poems in there. But a lot of them aren't hers. Now, I was made aware of this on my Instagram DMs because I take a lot of suggestions for these topics from Instagram, and they actually linked me to this TikTok in particular. But before we get any further, uh, I'm gonna do that thing again. Subscribe, please. <laughs> she has over 600,000 followers on TikTok, and she has published 16 poetry books on Amazon. I mean, that's a lot. of her work that she often shares online with her 600,000 followers. Eliza's fans say that they really love how relatable her poems are and how they accurately capture what a young adult feels. Right. But what they didn't know was, Eliza Grace is not a poet, she's a plagiarizer. Yeah, so this video goes on a little bit longer, showing some of the examples, but we actually have a Twitter thread from another author, someone else who writes poetry, who also just so happened to have their work stolen by Eliza Grace, and they have dug so deep into showing how many examples of plagiarism there is. So here's the author, she's called Sabina Laura, and she said that she's got a thread of all the stuff that's been stolen, and let's just look through these and see how blatantly stolen it is. So this is the one that was shown on the TikTok, so we have the original here that says, there is something beautiful about the way the hearts heal, and then we have Eliza's here that says there is something beautiful about the way the hearts heal. But then we'll notice the next few lines are very different, so it's okay. I mean, if we look at Eliza's here, it says it is slow and it is messy. But if we look at the original, it actually says it is slow, yes, and it is messy too. So I guess, um... Seems pretty different to me. But time is the most gentle stitching for even the deepest of wounds. And then we have Eliza that says, but time is the most gentle stitching for even the deepest of wounds. I mean, you can't even put up a defense for that, can you? Blatantly stolen. But look how many more there is, okay? Here's another example of one that was stolen. There's another one. I mean, I'm just gonna scroll down while I'm talking here. How many examples can you have of work being stolen pretty much word for word? And she would always like try and change like one or two words, I guess for copyright reasons. But this is just theft at the end of the day and just plagiarizing this and selling it. I mean, we're still going at this point. Like, how many examples do you want? And it's not like Eliza's just a poetry account that's reposting people's work and giving credit. She genuinely takes full credit for all of these. I mean, let's look at her bio on Amazon where she's selling all this plagiarism. Eliza Grace is a young poetry author pursuing a career in writing poetry books and eager to share her work with others. Eliza stated in an interview, I was so obsessed with reading poetry books. Then it became writing poetry. It was an instant connection. I fell in love with the meaningful simplicity of how such a little amount of words can make you feel so deeply. I mean, yeah, like, like the little amount of words that you actually change in his poem? Is that what's so meaningful? I was always passionate writing poems about breakups and being a hopeless romantic. I found both reading and writing poetry to be a comforting outlet for me to release emotions. This young author was born and raised in West Virginia. Her birthday is February 17th, 2004, which makes her 19, I believe. She started self-publishing her poetry books at age 17 on Amazon and went viral on TikTok with over 10 million views. Eliza plans to continue writing poetry books and inspiring authors. That should really read as Eliza's plans to start writing poetry books. 
looks because it doesn't seem like we've got there yet. Now, if we go far enough back on Eliza's account, it seems like she started off as just kind of doing your normal TikToks. I mean, we have one here that just says, when you buy HBO Max, just watch Euphoria Season 2 tonight. You know, just your standard TikTok. We have one here talking about her relationship and how long they've been together for. And we have another one here where she's saying, those song lyrics are relatable. And then she's put a bunch of her favorite like quotes from songs, which is kind of what she's doing now, except she's not explaining that they're from different poems. She's pretending she wrote them. So she may as well take credit for these songs at this rate. I mean, yeah, I've given you enough context of like the type of stuff she was posting. Here we have when my man asks for a sip of my drink, which I'm dying to know the punchline. <laughs> You're done. You're done. A work of art, quite frankly. But you know what it is, right? Reposting these poems and trying to take credit for them is one thing because you have a massive account. We're bigger than any of the people she's stolen from. That in itself is already bad. But the fact she sells these books and clearly sells them, by the way, because she's bragged about how many she's sold. Here she is saying my book is number 15 on Amazon's best-selling poetry. Here's another one that was before that, talking about how the book was ranked number 39. Obviously, it climbed the charts. And here we have a Word document where the description says it's a book in the making. Now, I don't know if this in particular one is plagiarized, but with the amount that we've seen, who knows? This is something that should be seen because a massive TikToker is just stealing their work, which is the exact reason why people follow her, because they think she writes her poetry, but yeah, unfortunately people haven't really seen this. Here we have another one from a different author who had been stolen from, making a TikTok talk about it. So as you can see, the caption says that feeling when someone can write a poem so they steal yours, they showed Eliza's, then it was William Bort, by the way, who written this. And we also have someone by the name of Christina Ma, who also has posted a few TikToks talk about it, which again, haven't really got that many views, so people aren't aware of this, which is a big shame for the people who actually put the effort in to write these. That's not her poem. That's my poem. I wrote it in 2020. It's in my 2020 collection, Heritage of Cards. You can see it right here. I know it's backwards, but she changed a couple words, published it with her name on it, and is now sharing it as though she wrote it. So scummy, man, because I can imagine that trying to make a career in poetry is probably very difficult. So the fact that she would just fuck over people who actually put the hard work in to write these poems and to publish for herself for a profit is genuinely disgusting in my eyes. So Saga continues. Um, I had a poem that she stole from me taken down from her main account. TikTok obviously found her in violation of my intellectual property rights. Amazon's pulling her book because obviously she violated my copyright. Yeah, I actually did notice that a few of the books that she's referenced in her videos, Eliza's videos, I can't see on her Amazon. So I can only assume, like, as Christina just mentioned here, that some of these books have been taken down because she has stolen the poems, but there's still a lot that are on there. Here's a clearer, not backwards look at my poem. Okay. Which is very you obvious in my poem yep. that I wrote in 2020. She changed the word dog to cat. Well, I mean, she did nothing wrong, eh? If you're gonna change a dog for a cat, at the end of the day, that's pretty original to me. Honestly, I might just start doing that. I might just start, like, dragging people's videos into AI and just reading it word for word and just, like, changing some words here and there, you know? If they do mention a dog, I could change it to a cat. Not really sure how many dogs or cats get mentioned in commentary videos. I feel like we're kind of past that now, you know, from, like, the whole Shane Dawson days. But if it was ever brought up, at least I have an idea of how I could change it. She also did this to Chloe Frayne. Sabina Laura, Nikita Gill, um, who knows how many others. Which is a massive shame, but it seems like no one actually cares. Because if we go over to Eliza's profile right now, I mean, I'll click on the most recent poem. As we can see by the comments, no one is calling it out unless they've been deleted. Maybe that is like a possibility, I guess. But it seems like no one is really aware. Like people are just kind of like talking about the poem itself and like saying that's very relatable and stuff. I mean, we've got a few people replying in the comments, trying to spread the message. We have someone here saying, I love your poem so much. Can you throw in a few best friend quotes I can send to my cousin? And then people replying saying it's not hers, but no one really seeing this at the end of the day it's a reply now luckily there is one account that has gained quite a lot of traction to this whole situation and um, they're called slamuri and they've posted one here that has 161,000 views going into some details about um eliza grace so more people are hearing about it but it still seems like not enough. This is someone who's profiting from other people's work, which is such a horrible thing to do with people, especially in a type of work that I can imagine is very hard to get into. I mean, one of the top comments on this particular TikTok is saying this was the first time I've ever heard about this, and I'm guessing that's going to be the same for a lot of you watching this video right now, so fair play to Slamuri, who actually got this story a lot more attention. Hopefully something can come out of this. It's just not on. I get that maybe a lot of people who watch this video can't relate to what it would be like to have your poetry stolen. I know I can't really relate to it, but if I did try to put myself in these author's shoes, I feel like I would be absolutely fearing with this situation. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. And if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like on it. Subscribe if you are new. And until next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.